question is, do you think Americans will get this movie? Yep. Yeah. That's what art can do. Comedy out of tragedy. Everybody knows the feelings about this, and it's still going around. How about even seeing Robert Greenwald's latest circulating about Afghanistan? If you don't cry hysterically, but you know, we're human. This is a globe. We gotta talk about how we act. And this, I do think everyone will get this movie. I, I, I just, we, we hear that question a lot, and, uh, or I, I hear it a lot, and I, it's, in, it's empirically evident. We're, we're all Americans, and as different as all of us can be, and we're all laughing our asses off. So. Married to a Marine. Uh, Army. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who else? <laughs> no, but we respect the Marines too. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think, um, I, as diverse as we all are, we all laugh together, and we, we can all uh, uh, connect, so. Here we are. Like, if everybody got it, then there's our evidence. Anything? Probably time for just a couple more questions. One, two, over there on the side. Okay, uh, there's so much richness. I mean, I was raised on a diet of British and American television, so I kind of get both sides. And there's so much richness, having been here 16 years ago, I'm really interested in American view. And I, I was listening to the, the last and I'd be really interested to see it playing in the British theatre. I'm not a British, but in the British theatre, and see if the laughter points were the same. Because there's so much in there. It's, I think this audience, the American audience, would get all of that 80% of the stuff, and the British audience would get a different 80%. And that's so rich. We have both things. The question is um, the, the difference between the American humour, the British humour, and if you know, you know what the response has been, if people are laughing at the same moments. You used a great phrase, the laughter points. And also, hearing your voice, and then you said, but I'm not from Britain. Are you Australian? Or? Okay, great. Um, here's one piece of empirical evidence. In the Alistair Campbell YouTube, he said, well, he thought the movie was very funny when it was dealing with the British. When it got over to America, he said he thought it lost its focus. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe that has to do with not understanding each other's power power corridors. But um, and I've never been in a British movie theater listening to people. But I know that Armando making it and our British colleagues acting with us, we were all on the same page. So I don't know. That's a great question. But Alistair Campbell is. Uh, on YouTube is instructive. I I um, have a feeling because actually the question do the Americans get it actually comes from a lot of the Brits and um, I think what they mean half the time is do we get the references because there's a lot of actual political references to I, I think to Claire Booth and to Alistair Campbell to like a whole bunch of different people that we really weren't that uh, well versed in um, the current affairs of, 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 on the other side of the pond. Um, and I, I wonder if it, it, it kind of reminds me of the of what I call the Seinfeld factor, where when I was growing up in, in Chicago, I loved Seinfeld and I thought it was hysterical. And then when I moved to New York, I, it was like watching a whole new show because I got all of these other references on a completely different layer. And so I wonder if, you know, once, once we uncover some more of the references or more of the British um, actual current affair um, studying Shakespeare. Yes, indeed. And we, we can watch this for, for forever, and it'll it'll stand the test of time. <laughs> it's because he's on the far end. Uh, one last question. Right here, I haven't talked to anyone on this side. I have two short questions. Two short questions. That was never really discussed. She asked whether uh, Gandolfini was Colin Powell, but they, 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 right, I, I don't remember ever having heard her, you know, his name. It's really, they really did try to sort of keep it general. I mean, not that he wasn't a general, but he had a good way kind of general uh, in terms of, of, uh, of the people. So everybody kind of steered clear of doing specifically those people. But what was the other question? The other question is, um, the Martin Forum a few years ago did play really about this subject. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. And I just wondered if any of you or even more importantly, the writers had seen that and weren't anyway influenced. It's a very similar kind of outlook on the absurdity of the writers. 
I don't know that they did, but I was telling them, I, we, this was also at the Berkshire uh, Film Festival, and just before when I had the question period, I, I thought I would check on Alistair Campbell, who as you know was the Peter Capaldi character. And I Googled uh, him, and uh, the first thing that came up was this, the, the Downing Street, the thing about, remember the, the phrase sexed up? Remember that some, somebody had, whether or not they had sexed up a, um, uh, some sort of memo. And that's what they're talking about. And I, am, as I see this movie more, because I don't know Armando that well, and I don't know any of these guys that well, the writers. So I didn't know how much this is based on fact, but it is really based on fact all, quite a bit, much more than I thought. Like I have a line that says, all roads lead to Munich. I'm saying that. Well, I just read this book called um, America Alone by these two uh, conservatives. And to them, to the neocons, Munich is like the ultimate disaster, right? That's the capitulation. So they had, there were all kinds of things in here. And Alistair Cook, this, uh, when, I mean, Alistair uh, Campbell, when he saw this, uh, he, he apparently, from, from those who are around him, said that there were three things that absolutely did not happen. And all the people who knew him said that those were the things that actually did happen. <laughs> and they also said that a lot of the other stuff that was made up also happened. <laughs> Armando was guessing, and uh, the, the Downing Street memo, of course, was out. And I have to laugh. Back in um, the, the recent past, we, uh, some actors got together and did an audio of the Downing Street memo, just so people would know what was in it and put it online. It was all of us trying to do our English accents. And uh, I think what an irony that, you know, this film came around and I participated in it. But the Downing Street Memo meets The Office. That's what this is. I think it's informed by the Downing Street Memo. Armando was trying to keep away from what he knew about the Down Downing Street Memo and imagine something parallel to it. And the amazing thing is that in imagining something parallel to it, evidently from what we're hearing, he he landed on the truth in several instances. You know, he did research in Washington, and <laughs> Armando, he's this little short guy, you know, sort of bald, kind of uh, cherubic, and uh, he wanted to go to the State Department, so he uh, make, made up on the Xerox machine a sort of fake uh, ID that said HBO, and, uh, and had his picture, and he hung it around his neck, and he walked in, and uh, at the desk they said, can I help you? And he said, I'm here for the 2.30. And they said, oh, okay, fine. He was walking around the State Department. Take a picture. On the other hand, they didn't let us have the last shot at the UN. By the last day of this film, we were supposed to shoot at the UN, and they had asked, and they were going to have the permit, and all of a sudden the permit was revoked. And then we tried to get the shot anyway on the street. And it's not in the movie because they had to cut 269 pages out of the script. But um, it was interesting. Armando just went ahead and did this movie. Dennis Kucinich took us around on a beautiful tour of the Capitol when we were filming in D.C. and received us very generously, um, as did Lynn Wilsey. And of course, that was because I, I knew them. I would have called anybody I knew, but I knew them, and they were wonderful to us. And our wonderful British colleagues got to see Claire Short. I met Claire Short, who was a woman uh, who was against the war in the British Parliament. And um, Anne Wright, some of you might know, you know, said I could meet her. So it was an interesting time of the cast meeting without an agenda, I must say, just people who introduced them to the corridors of power. And Armando said at the audition that he couldn't believe that there were, um, he saw when he toured DC in research, staffers see someone from the West Wing, an actor, and they lost it. They were like, oh my God, that's, I guess his name is Brad Whitford, is he here? Anyway, you know, oh my God, and Armando from England was thinking, but, but he's an actor who plays you. You're the real star, you're the exciting person to meet. So it was really interesting um, mix of, of real life, and it's important to know where the power resides and what the impact of the power can be. That's, that's where we've got to understand the lesson of this movie. Thank you very much for bringing it to us.